Hello everyone, I'm Matt from 3D360 and today I'm going to show you how to unblock the hot end on your Ender 3 3D printer. So there's two methods that you can use when unblocking the hot end. The first one is what's called a cold pull. So that doesn't require much disassembly of the hot end, um, so it's good for novice users. However, it's not as effective on clearing the nozzle. Um, and then the other method is taking the nozzle off the hot end and pushing the Bowden tube all the way through to clear absolutely everything out of the hot end. That's a lot more effective, but it does require um, a bit more disassembly of the hot end. So the first step with the cold pull is to preheat the machine. So what I'm going to do is click my scroll wheel in, go to temperature, preheat PLA, and now because I'm clearing a blockage, I'm only going to preheat PLA end, so that's just going to do the hot end. So now that the printer has preheated, um, what we're going to do first is remove the filament. I'll just give that a pull and that will come out. So you might find that when you're removing the filament, um, it can be quite hard to remove if there's a bad enough blockage in the hot end. So what we can do is we can actually ask the printer to um, remove the filament for us if we're, we're unable to do it. So what you want to do is click your selector dial in, go to motion, move axes, scroll all the way down to extruder, move 10 mil, and you can ask it to move um, the extruder in a minus number so that it'll pull the filament out. Obviously we've not got any filament in there now so it's just doing nothing. Um, but that's just something you can do if you are struggling with pulling the filament out. So yeah, now that the filament's removed, what we're going to do is we're going to remove our blue collet clip off of the pneumatic fitting. So we can just pull that and then keep that to one side because it is small so you can lose it. And then we're just going to press down on our pneumatic fitting and pull the Bowden tube up out the hot end. So you can see there, straight away, there's some molten filament in the end of the Bowden. So we'll have to cut the Bowden and make it a little bit shorter. So what you can do is use a Bowden cutting jig. So this is one that's 3D printed. Um, and all you need to do with this is slide the Bowden in one end. And then you can grab a knife and then cut the Bowden tube so that it's nice and flush and clear of any filament. You do want to make sure that it's a nice flush cut um, when you cut the Bowden because it's seating up against the nozzle. So you need to make sure that there's a good, uh, good contact between the nozzle and the Bowden. So even though we cut a new end on the Bowden tube and cleared any molten plastic out of there, there might still be some plastic in the hot end um, that's also causing a blockage. So what we can do is grab a little piece of filament, it doesn't have to be much, and then just feed it straight into the hot end and you'll start feeling it melt and you'll probably see a little bit come out of the nozzle as well. So with the filament still in the hot end, um, we're going to cool the printer down. So click your selector wheel in, go over to temperature, all the way to the bottom and click cool down. So that's going to cool down the, the hot end and the bed if that was heated as well. And we're just going to let it get to about between 60 and 90 degrees and then pull the filament out of the hot end and hopefully that will pull anything with it. So the printer has just got down to 98 degrees now. So I'm just going to let it cool a little bit longer and then I'm going to pull this filament out. So I'm just let it get to about 90 degrees. And all I'm going to do is just grab this filament and pull it. You do have to watch for that fan because you heard it then. The filament hitting the fan um, and the filament can damage it. But there you go. So you can see I've pulled it out and it's pulled the blockage out as well.
And so yeah, now that we've cleared the blockage, all we need to do is push the Bowden tube back into the hot end and put our cowlick clip on. So I'll just do that now. So you do want to make sure that you feel the Bowden tube hit the nozzle, because like I say, you want good contact between the two. And then grab your little collet clip and just put that in between the collar of the pneumatic fitting. Right, okay, so we're going to run through the second method now, um, which is where you take the nozzle out and push the Bowden tube all the way through the hot end to clear anything that could be in there. So the first step, like always, is to preheat the machine. So what we're going to do is click our selector dial in, go down to temperature, preheat PLA, and again, we're only doing the, the hot end and there's no need to do the bed. So now that the printer is up to temperature, what we're going to do is remove the filament, just like we did with the last method. As you can see, that was a bit difficult to, uh, to pull out. So I think the clog in there is probably quite bad. So I'll just wind that back onto the spool. Make sure it's through its locator holes. And then we'll be able to take the Bowden tube out of the hot end. So taking the Bowden tube out of the hot end, again, just like the last method, we're going to start by removing our blue collet clip. Again, don't lose it because it is small. And then we can press our pneumatic fitting collar down and pull the Bowden tube up. So it doesn't seem to be any more unfilament in the end this time. So you can put that to one side and then we can work on getting the nozzle and the pneumatic fitting off. So for taking the pneumatic fitting off the hot end, you want to use the big spanner out of the toolkit. So it's the double-ended one with the larger end. I'm just going to loosen it off like you would with anything else. Now, once you've loosened it a bit, you can start getting to it with your fingers, but it is quite a, a difficult area to access. So, you just take that off. So, before we remove the nozzle, obviously we want to have some, um, some room to work with. So we're going to move the Z-axis up. So to do this, click your wheel in, go to motion, move axes, move Z, and then we're going to click move 10 mil. So we'll be able to move the Z-axis in 10 mil steps. I'm just going to move it about 100 mil or so. So we can start working on removing the uh, nozzle now. And the first step to that is removing the silicon sock, which is covering the nozzle. And the best method I find is to just get your small nozzle spanner, as we need this anyway, and just get it through the open end of that silicon sock, and you can sort of hook it off. Now it is up, so you do need to be careful, so feel free to use pliers or something um, to grab it. But now that we've taken that off, we can see the, uh, the brass nozzle there. So all we need to do for this is put our nozzle spanner on. And then rotate to the left. So that's going to start coming off now. And again, obviously, this is going to drop. So I would recommend using some pliers um, or something that you can hold the nozzle with. There you go, so that's just come out now. So we're up to the step now where we're actually going to clear the blockage. So to do this, grab your Bowden tube, and just push it. It might take two hands, one to hold the gantry and one to push it through. Just push it all the way through the hot end.
So you can see there, that's eventually come through and that's cleared the block that was in the, uh, in the hot end just there. So it's just a case then, pull it back through and then we can work on dis uh, reassembling the hot end the same way we disassembled it. So we're up to the stage now where we can start reassembling the hot end now that we've cleared the block. So we're going to start by putting the nozzle in. So I've got a little socket here which will help me reinstall the nozzle. So you can see the nozzle's just sat in there. Um, although you can, you can use pliers if you don't have one of these. So I'm just going to line the threads up. Eventually that will start going in and then I can just keep tightening that until the nozzle is nice and tight. So I'm just going to make sure that that's really tight. And then we'll go to put the silicone sock on next. So now we're up to putting the silicone sock on and that is just a case of sliding it on. Now it's important to know the silicone sock has got one open end. Now this needs to go to the right hand side because that's where all the wiring comes out of the hot end. So I'll just slide that on. It kind of locates itself pretty easily. So there you go, you can see the, the nozzle's coming out the end there now and it's all secure. So the next step now that the nozzle's in and the silicon socks on is to put the pneumatic fitting back onto the top of the hot end. So I'm just going to do it by hand as much as I can to speed up the process. And then the last little bit I can just get with me big spanner. As you can see there that's nice and tight. The next step is to push the Bowden back in, back into the hot end. So we're just going to push that in and then make sure we feel it hit the nozzle, which I did then. And then lastly, to finish it off, get your little C-clip and just put that on the collar of the pneumatic fitting. 